I am I'm assuming that it won't be surprising for all of us right now if to to know that we will spend our upcoming Ramadan at our home. Most of the masajids won't be open, at least the first half of it. It doesn't look better. Every day is getting worse. So I would say get ready for one of the most unique Ramadan of your life. And maybe once in a lifetime Ramadan. You won't get this hopefully, inshallah, this kind of Ramadan ever. Where masajid will be closed. We will have to compensate the deficiency at our homes. No iftar parties. You are not going at someone's house. No one is coming at your house for a iftar party. Um, and this will going to actually make it the most unique Ramadan, subhanAllah, because you, you, just, you just have to keep this in mind, subhanAllah. It's very important for us to know. We Muslims are used to have a very sophisticated Ramadan. I'm using the word sophisticated. Yes, sophisticated Ramadan. We, have, we used to have lavish parties or iftar parties or iftari at the masjid and parties at the home praying tarawih peacefully at night in the masjid. Even if kids are making noise, you'll say, no, 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 don't make noise. Let me pay attention. Praying tarawih with peace, fasting, sleeping before and after work. This year, it will be different. It should actually remind us of how most of the times Prophet Muhammad Wasallam spent Ramadan during his lifetime. And I just want to give you some historical fact before we can start fiqh of Ramadan, if you're writing the notes. Ramadan became mandatory when Prophet ﷺ moved to Medina. So around nine to ten years of fasting, and then he will going to meet his Lord. He will going to do that. In these few years, you will see how many Ramadans he, he spent in Masjid and Abu, and how many Ramadan he did not spend in Masjid and Abu. Subhanallah. That's the start. Immediately when Ramadan became mandatory in Medina, next year, in the second year of Hijri, Battle of Badr was there. And we all know that Battle of Badr took place in Ramadan. Muslims won that battle, Battle of Badr, on 17th of Ramadan, subhanAllah. So Prophet Muhammad SAW didn't say, no, 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 I have to spend my entire Ramadan in Masjid al -Nabi. No, he is actually in the battlefield. In, immediately when Ramadan fasting became mandatory. Sec, uh, then, then there is one more thing, Battle of Trenches, Battle of Trenches, where Muslims started to dig humongous trenches around Medina, for a defensive strategy, which is started in fifth Hijri of Ramadan. So you assume that, that you have to dig trenches for the battle, such an exhausting work during the Ramadan, subhanAllah. Then eight year of Hijri, few years down the road, Fatih Makkah happened, and that also happened in Ramadan. Thousands of companions and along with Rasulullah from Medina to Makkah, they have to go um, and this also, again, an exhausting thing, subhanAllah. Um, then Battle of Tabuk happened. Rasulullah had to travel to Tabuk and that extended stretch to the Ramadan also. That happened only also in Ramadan. We are looking at one of the most important aspects of Rasulullah spending Ramadan. Almost half of the Ramadans in Prophet's life after he moved to Medina, he did not spend in Masjid al -Nabi, half of his Ramadans. He did not spend his Ramadan, half of his Ramadan, in Masjid Nabi with peaceful ibadat. He went out on a battlefield to establish social justice, to end the oppression. Every other year, there's something happening. So this Ramadan will going to give us a real experience of what uh, Ramadan looks like in the eyes of Sunnah, subhanAllah. Um, just a just, um, uh, long story short, even after Rasulullah this was continued, Battle of, Battle of Qadisiyah happened at the time of Amr ibn Khattab, that happened in Ramadan. Then conquest of Andalus happened when Tariq bin Ziyad actually conquered the entire Andalus in 90th, 92nd Hijri. That happened in the month of Ramadan. Um, so, so just get ready for the most unique Ramadan, but our, our ancestors, our great pious predecessors were used to these kinds of Ramadan. Uh, where they won't spend Ramadan in the masjid only, your most sophisticated Ramadan. Um, just one reminder I will give before we can start, be positive about this once in a lifetime opportunity because it's easy to feel negative in the current environment. There's a potential harm in economy and finance. There's coronavirus is there outside, what will happen to our health? Maybe I will get sick, then I will go to ER, then I will go to ventilator, then I'll go to ICU and so on and so forth. What if I won't get the ventilator? What if the priorities and so on and so forth? It's easy to feel negative. Stop thinking about that. I'm not saying don't take preventive measures. Don't be fooled. We have to take preventive measures. We have to follow the CDC guideline. But try to think positive. Try to think positive that this Ramadan is coming. 
I will actually make this as once in a lifetime opportunity because I don't know if next year Ramadan, I have to stay at home necessarily. Whether you are a student, you have to do home schooling. If you are working, most of you actually are working from home. So this is a beautiful opportunity. There is no excuse. Previously, there was an excuse that, oh, because of my work, because of my volunteership in Masjid, I could not spend. Now, this is a perfect opportunity for you to spend time for with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.